Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, this morning I'm going to be doing a warm-up of some cartoon faces and character faces for you guys. Uh, I typically like to do a really quick warm-up every morning, whether it's digital, whether it's traditional, using wax pencils, color pencils, watercolor, whatever it is. I just like to get my fingers moving, you guys know that. Um, about me. So uh, I'll just go through the process, probably do maybe two faces today. Uh, enjoy the process. Okay, so uh, I'm working on Strathmore paper today. Really smooth, just a great feeling piece of paper. I think this particular brand um, and this particular sketch pad has to do with um, comic books. I don't do comic books currently, uh, so I like the feel of this paper a lot and it really helps whenever I'm drawing. Uh, it doesn't really have a tooth to it. It's got a really smooth tooth. It really helps me out whenever I'm drawing some stuff like this. So, <clears throat> cartoon faces. You guys know that I love doing cartoons. I love doing faces in general. You know, blocking stuff out, which is what I'm doing right now, really helps me out. Um, whenever I'm designing characters like this. So I'm gonna be doing kind of like a pirate, some pirates this morning. Pirate seems to be kind of like my default. I really enjoy doing <clears throat> pirate faces. I like their, their uh, you know, the, the variables and the variances that I can get with each particular character face. Um, skinny, fat, uh, worn down, grizzled, whatever it is you can really have a lot of fun with characters like this. Um, hopefully everybody's doing well in their current status. I tried to do a video on Monday and I epically failed. <laughs> epically failed, what do you mean? Um, I had had a really rough weekend uh, also just trying to facilitate and manage the fact that I'm I'm trying to get some work uh, done and also trying to replace the work that went away due to the whole COVID-19. And I've been kind of stressed about it. <clears throat> and finally, you know, it all came to a head Monday morning. And I was like, man, why am I so stressed about this? And I just, I got, I got irritated. And everything that I put down on paper was garbage. And you're like, how does that happen? Well, unfortunately, even with professionals, you know, you can allow that to really stop you or you can allow that to inspire you to do better. So I kind of did both. <laughs> At first I was so mad. I don't know if you guys ever had that issue. But I was just like, oh, I mean, why am I even doing this art thing? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so <clears throat> discouraged. You know, I've tried to get jobs and, and, and more work. And then, you know, I, I, I really, this really helped me out a lot. I went back to that kid when I was, you know, 12, 13 years old. And I saw, um, I don't remember what it was. I think they were doing a re-release of Robin Hood in the theaters. I might've been a little bit older. And I remember seeing that and just having that zeal and that fervor for animation uh, and character design, <clears throat> you know? And I just remember that feeling. And I, and I thought to myself, you know, no matter how hard it gets, no matter what's going on, I'm always going to be an artist, you know? Whether or not I do it professionally is a different story, because honestly, it's it's been so hard lately with, uh, with getting work, keeping work. Um, you know, I really, I actually thought about stopping uh, doing art <clears throat> professionally. You know, I would do it privately, and then getting, you know, a job doing whatever. Um, but I really, I really went back and I thought, you know, I, I can't, 
I, I have to keep going forward. I have to keep going forward because this is, you know, this is part of me. You know, being an artist is part of me, part of who I am. And I can't let three months, three and a half months of, of garbage get rid of all the years that I've put in, the late nights, you know, all that stuff. And get rid of all of that. Um, because honestly, that would be, that would be folly. It would be a mistake for me to do that. So I kind of said buck up buttercup and went, you know, kind of went back to the beginning. You know, I always reference one of my favorite movies, The Princess Bride. <clears throat> um, where, uh, Mandy Patinkin's character, he's like, Vassini told me, if you ever get lost, basically, you go back to the beginning, back where you started. So, that's what I'm doing. What I'm going to do, over the next month, roughly, I mean, we're the 10th, so the next 20 days, I'm going to do a video every single day. Something short, something sweet. Maybe it's a Disney character. Maybe it's a pirate character like this. Um, but I'm going to go back to my passion, which is doing character art, character designs, faces, bodies, creatures, uh, and just have fun. You know, we get so stressed out about bills, about the world and about everything else that we we really lose sight of who we are as people, and I don't want to do that anymore, you know? So I'm going to concentrate, I'm going to concentrate on the art, okay? All right, so you guys got to watch this whole process. Pretty simple, pretty easy character, right? So we're going to give him, let's give him a, his jawline comes up, let's give him a beard right here. Color that in just slightly. Right here. Shade his cheek in. Let me sharpen my pencil. Sorry about this. Okay. I gotta have an earring, right? Because they're pirates. So, if you're interested in watching me do a character, or if you want to follow along, that's that's up to you, right? Let's put it over on its side here. Do a little bit of shading. Go ahead and do this in right here. Which side of his nostril? Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Just collar. I used to live in Florida, for those of you who don't know, I used to live in a town called Apopka. Apopka, Florida. Apopka, I believe, was it's an, a Native American word. I've been the Seminoles. I really don't know. For potato, <clears throat> uh, Apopka is actually the indoor foliage capital of the world. So that's where they grow a lot of the roses and and stuff that you see in flower shops. So anyway, Apopka is right north. Like here's here's Orlando. Apopka is like right there. So literally, Apopka is kind of in the sweet spot between all of the attractions. You know, you got your Disney, um, uh, Universal Studios, you know, all those things were like 35 to 40 minutes away. And it was, uh, I lived there for, gosh, I lived there for 15 years. And my wife and I had a little bit of a change. 
and we needed to change and we had an opportunity we moved up here in the mountains of georgia why i'm bringing that up is um i also lived uh in a place called daytona beach um port orange which is basically uh just south of daytona uh you know within 20 miles 15 20 miles and you know i would go to the beach all the time it was really cool just a real tourist market. Again, you know, very close proximity to Disney and, and some of those other areas. <clears throat> a real tourist mecca. And also, what was really cool is the fact that I was in close proximity to like St. Augustine. And for you guys know, St. Augustine <clears throat> had a lot of, uh, you know, it's one of the oldest cities uh, in the United States, you know. Your Ponce de Leon and uh, all the Spanish explorers that uh, frequent in the area, and there's you know Spanish forts, and it's really cool. And there's a really great pirate legacy there, <clears throat> which I loved. I loved going to St. Augustine. <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. So that's probably why I have kind of a a soft spot affinity for pirates. That and the fact, you know, the whole parts of the Caribbean, me growing up. Um, I didn't grow up in Florida. I, I moved there when I was 16. I, I was born in Fort Lauderdale, but uh, I ended up moving to Louisiana when I was four. And I lived uh, in a place called Denham Springs, Louisiana, <clears throat> um, and grew up in the, in the deep south, you know, with your, your Cajun food and, and that whole culture, Cajun culture and hunting and fishing and basically Huckleberry Finn. I was Huckleberry Finn, you know, me and my friends were, we got to, you know, go hunting and fishing and build forts and we built wooden rafts, literally wooden rafts, and we sailed them on, you know, on the uh, Amy River, uh, which is um, one of the rivers that goes through uh, Denham Springs. Um, and that whole thing also led to kind of my being, as far as, you know, me being a creative and whatnot, <clears throat> I was really allowed to do pretty much what I wanted to when I was a kid. I didn't have curfews, you know, I was a decent kid. I didn't get into drugs or anything like that. You know, I didn't, I didn't disobey uh, my parents or anything like that, too bad. Um, and, you know, I, I really, I'm fortunate to the fact that I didn't have, you know, some of those issues that I think uh, a lot of the city kids may, may have had, you know, being subject to certain aspects of uh, culture at that time. You know, I really just enjoy being who I was as a kid. And, you know, I grew up in the early 80s. I was born in 73, <clears throat> so I grew up in the 80s, and I really got to experience all the goodness of the 80s, you know, and all the, you know, like your, your major icons that are coming back now in terms of movies, your Ghostbusters, your Goonies, your Star Wars, all that stuff, you know, I experienced it as it was uh, in its fruition, you know, Back to the Future, uh, all that. So I really, really had a great, I think a great childhood uh, overall. Okay, so I just wanted to do a really quick um, time lapse for you guys. You know, I, I wanted to say all that to lead into, you know, we are all a product of kind of our environments. And, you know, these drawings are a really good example. I just love storytelling. And I love characterizations and, um, you know, the human condition and emotion. And when I draw characters like this, especially pirates, I get down into the gritty, you know, minutia of, you know, the culture and, and some of those other areas. So I encourage you, you know, if you're kind of lacking in historical reference for your characters, definitely do some research and dive in deep. It helps. You know, you look at a drawing like this, 
and it, it, it you build on it, right? You start out with your basics. Give him some teeth. Hey, give him some crooked teeth. Make some. Basics being your basic shapes. Then you move on to thinking in three dimensions. So I'll just do a really quick tutorial for you guys, just here at the end of the video. So thinking in three dimensions. So I start out with a basic shape. So we all know how to do a circle, right? Circles are pretty easy. What I'll do sometimes is I'll sit here and I'll practice circles, right? Because it gets my arm moving right so then how do you transfer this to something like this because this has dimensionality this has form this has presence and then you're injecting emotion into it and then it has weight and volume you know and movement and so what i i do is i like to block things out okay you know we all drew this as a kid right if we remember this and you're like Hey, check it out, I did a 3D square. Yeah, look at me. The thing is, is there there is some real value in understanding this basic 3D form as it rests on a 2D surface. You know, I look at the 2D surface and I think, I don't think 2D flat surface, I never do. I always think this is a world that has this, this form. So, you know, this is a side right here, right? This is a side right here, okay? And I start fleshing things out based upon this right here, this volume principle. And I do this in my head as I'm sculpting, okay, sculpting. So if I have a circle, and then what I'll do is Okay, the basic construction of a skull. So that right there gives me, gives me a template to really build upon. So now I can start pushing and pulling and sculpting that form, okay, based upon the vision I have in my head. So. A lot of times you'll see artists draw these construction lines. And what these construction lines do is they help the artist think about this as a three-dimensional form. This is one of the hardest principles um, that I taught whenever I was teaching a uh, college course on illustration. And you're thinking, well, illustration. Okay, but illustration is, is it's a way of seeing, a way of, telling, a way of telling stories. So then you'll see people and artists that'll have this center line. And, I'm, and this applies to a face. Obviously, if I'm doing a different character or a creature, then you're gonna have to adjust this line accordingly. But this, you know, as a face. And then I think of the underlying structure, okay? Um, you know, I have my nose cavity here, and I have these large, here's a cheekbone right here that comes down, and then I have these large eye cavities. Okay. And basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm using this basic shape and form to help dictate where things are in the skull structure. I have that come here. And here's that big jawline. Okay, so now that I've got my basic underlying structure, I can continue on with the skull, or I can I can start putting that layering on top of it. So you have this comes right here, right there. Okay, we have the back of the skull right here. And there's the neck. And we have the spine on the inside. These teeth.
Okay. So now what I do, now that I've got my basics down and I do the skull in my head, I don't draw the skull out unless I'm, like I said, I'm specifically doing a skull. So now I start layering on skin <clears throat> and a lot of things are involved in, you know, bringing forth my vision for a particular character, you know, ethnicity. Let's see, go down here. The center line comes like that. Ethnicity, you know, what kind of character it is. <coughs> you know, emotion. So. All of these things really, a big old cheek. He's kind of a brute. And then the thing, the thing happens is whenever you start bringing in skin, I think a lot of people get lost. And the mouth usually screws people up too, I've noticed. Come around here. And two, here's that eye socket. It goes really big. But we're, we're, we're gonna have that come here. Comes around. That other socket comes here. You can see the bottom of it. And here's the lid. Baggage. The baggage is that fat area that kind of fills in because you got that large socket. You got all these muscles, right? Kind of like that. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this up really quick for you guys. So here's that head comes around here, here's the top of the ear. This cheekbone comes up, around, and what I like to do, jawline, here's that ear. Don't overcomplicate the ear. Of course, it depends on what kind of drawing you're doing. here and we're gonna come down a little butt chin and you got this right here up shadowed underneath and now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just going back and correcting some of the things that I see All right it's gonna be a big old wide neck he's a big guy
not great, but it gives you a basic understanding of how my brain works whenever I'm doing stuff like this. It's like thinking in three dimensions, putting it down on paper, sculpting the image, you know, and this applies, of course, if you're doing like a body, right? And thinking generally, you know, you, you do things in a general sense first, and then you move on to the specifics. If you can get the general pose down, then you use this as a template to go back and start plugging in, right? And doing those things that you know Here's the three-quarter view. Put a close on him. You know, come in here and have this bottom of his swashbuckler. He's got some boots on. And literally going back, let's have his coat come right here. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys today. Just a quick warm-up of the faces with an understanding of my mental process as I go through and I create these character drawings. So hopefully you guys got something. Check back tomorrow. We should have another video then. Have a great day. Bye.